The following programme contains subject matter dealing with the paranormal which some may find to be controversial. The views expressed by the host and or the guests do not necessarily reflect those of the network or its sponsors. Audience discretion is advised. Here's your host, Coyote Knight. Welcome to, te- to Transcendental Night Offerings. We're live here on Paranormal Warehouse, and I have Miss Lisa Franks and Miss Deborah Fawcett. Uh, both of them work at the Old Lavaca Jail in Hallettsville, Texas. And Lisa, we'll start off with you. Tell us about you. Thanks, Kyle. <laughs> We've known each other for a while. We've had our ups and downs, and uh, it is actually great to see you again. I've really, truly missed you. And I'm really hoping that uh, you and Michelle can make it out to the jail sometime really soon. Uh, I'm going to have a great time. <laughs> but anyway, my name, my, yes, please, soon. Um, but anyway, my name is Lisa. I've, um, I'm a mom and a wife. I live in uh, Cypress, Texas. I've been a paranormal investigator for quite a while now. Um, was with the team for a while and then met the wonderful uh, Miss Deborah Fawcett. And uh, she asked me to uh, be a part of the journey with her on uh, being a caretaker at the jail, renovation, demo, uh, kind of stuff like that. So we've been doing that for three years now, and it has been an amazing journey. Met some great people. I think that's been my favorite part of it all is just the, the people I've met have been just amazing. The experiences have been great. Um, Deborah is freaking amazing. We have some we have some great times together. If you follow our page, you'll see our, our adventures. Um, but it's uh, that's kind of a little bit about me and uh, what we've been doing a lot at the jail and doing some renovations and demo here and there. And it's been a been a journey to say the least. <laughs> <laughs> and how about you, Miss Deborah? Well, (laughs) I've been there for a little longer than Lisa. Uh, I started helping uh, the gentleman who owns the jail, Roger Chambers, do the cleanup and start restoring the jail. I love uh, historic preservation and restoration stuff. And uh, we just, uh, I've been a paranormal investigation investigator for many, many years. I'm really, really old, so I've been doing this a long time, but to, to meet him and to see the jail and to have this opportunity to help him with that project and knowing straight away from the first uh, night that I was there that it was really haunted, uh, this is like a dream come true for me. So I quit my job as ma- uh, manager of medical practice and uh, started working on the jail pretty much right after that. So. We worked on cleaning it up and all the hazards that go with that. And Lisa got to miss all of the fun part of that. And uh, I think you made it back I got to the floors. <laughs> but yeah, we've been working on it a long time. We, uh, about a year after I started uh, doing the restoration work, we had electricity and plumbing and restrooms and it wasn't nasty. You didn't have to wear a mask to come in there. We decided to open it up to professional private paranormal investigators for overnight visits, sometimes weekends. Uh, primarily, Roger's objective was to restore the old jail and make it available to the community again to promote history awareness because it's really a cool place. But he buys a lot of historic buildings, primarily for unique filming locations. So we've had a lot of independent films and things like that done there, but uh, most of our time is spent with our investigator friends who come to love that place and it kind of sucks you in, doesn't it, Lisa? Uh, Yeah, it does, a whole lot. (laughs) How many times has it been on television? (laughs) Well, we've we've done uh, news stories. We've done the Russell Rush on a tour. We, uh, I really... (laughs) <laughs> not excited about network TV. We did uh, 
film actually a network TV show there. I won't say the network, but it was one we all watch. And uh, it was a nightmare. <laughs> it was. <laughs> But we ate good. Uh, it was a nightmare. <laughs> and they was... filmed for like a week in July last year, wasn't it? July? Yes, ma'am. Anyway, the star of their show, and it was a new show, uh, got into some legal difficulties is what I hear. And no one will ever see it. And thank God for that. Because, <laughs> you know, I told Lisa, I pray. this. I knew they had shot like six episodes, you know, and and I'm thinking, well, hopefully we'll be the last and it'll be canceled before they ever get to us. But uh, canceled before it even hit the airs. <laughs> <laughs> Praise Thank Jesus. God. There is God. <laughs> but, that bad. I, I learned in that week I am not a good actress <laughs> at all. <laughs> you know, and I tried to explain to her. Yeah, she did. That, uh, you know, they're going to come, they're going to have some scripted stuff, they're going to shoot a lot of B roll. They pretty much already know what they're going to do while they're here. We'll be lucky if they actually investigate, put any real footage in there. Uh, and that's pretty much the way a lot of these are. And it's just, I, I can't stand it. Yeah. I mean, if I was, if we were in this for fame and fortune and, you know, we wanted to be on TV, you know, it would be one thing. But I'm telling you, we have turned down a lot of network contracts. Yes, we have. Yeah, we have. Because I, I just... Uh, We've had wonderful promotions, though, from all of our groups that have been there. I mean, there are hundreds of videos on YouTube. Yeah, there um, is. I uh, sad to say, a lot of them I haven't even seen because you know, I just don't have the time. But I mean, they've gotten some amazing stuff there, and I prefer that much more than network TV that's made up because you know the jail is a place where you don't have to fabricate anything. If you're a, an investigator and you want to spend some time there, I promise you, you're going to walk away with a lot of evidence. You don't have to come in there and, you know, great chaos. Same type of thing, yeah. So. Yeah, it's just yeah. not been pleasant experience for us so far. And, you know. Well, my thing is, is, I love history. So, Me I too. mean, I know there's probably a lot and probably too much to tell at one time but can you, can you kind of give a brief history of the place it was built in 1885 and originally on that property was an old house that belonged to marshall merritt dw merritt and he donated the property for the jail to be built and it was built connected to that house so the jail opened in 1886 actually and uh it was the, it closed in 2005, making it the second oldest continuously operating jail in Texas. It took me a long time to be able to say that, but being a docent there now, it got down. But it, uh, but I like think back, a lot, huh? Well, just back in the day, up until the 1960s, um, families of the sheriff lived in the jail on that house that was attached to the back of the jail so the families and actually lived there in the jail as well lots of oh. families grew up there no kidding yeah so you'll hear babies crying kids and people are thinking why are we getting this and it's like well there used to be families that lived here i believe up until 1969 sheriff dodds 1969 when sheriff dodds and his deputy were killed and lisa and i are fortunate enough to be friends with his daughter who's helped us so much and we think of her every time we pull in there because her name is carved into the concrete there from when she was a little girl but she has told us so many stories and gave us photographs of when she lived there uh she gave when, us when she lived there so it gave us a better idea of how to um you know decorate things because it is a museum as well so I remember telling her I've hung a picture of your father in the sheriff's office probably five times and every time it gets knocked off the wall it just won't stay no matter what we do and she goes well this was never my dad's office I just took it for granted it was always the sheriff's office and she said no my dad had a table in the hallway and his office was in the basement of the courthouse a block yeah. over so then it made sense that yeah he <laughs> didn't want to you know but in 
Uh, twice the jail was flooded with eight feet of water, 1940, 1981. The flood in 1981 took that house completely away. And the chimney stood or still in the ditch out back behind the jail, but it was replaced. Jail, actually see where the house was ripped away. There's like a mark. Oh yeah. The, yeah, that you can see where it was ripped away. But it oh, was gosh. replaced with a tin building that is also connected to the jail, just like the house was. And at that point they needed just administrative room more than they needed living quarters. No one was living there then. And it had their kitchen and uh, the laundry room. They cooked, you know, meals for all the prisoners and their sauces back there. And in 1976, they added uh, new cells to the downstairs and a lot of administrative room out front. And Lisa's husband, Chris Franks to Z-Rock was our project manager for, our goal was always from the beginning to remove all of that and restore the original facade of the jail the way that it looked in 1885. Her husband made that happen in six days with one piece of equipment. One piece of equipment. And one other guy, me and Lisa. We <laughs> tore it down without I'm mishap. <laughs> that was an emotional it, week. <laughs> It was emotional because we've looked at these photographs of the old jail for years since we've been there and we'd never seen it, you know, and until we'd never been able to look out the front windows. Until and it was, was a very gone. scary process as each of those walls slowly came down because we had no idea what it was going to look underneath. And to see them so perfect and so oh beautiful, gosh. I mean, we were just crying in the middle of the street holding each other like a bunch of dogs. <laughs> we were cool i mean it was you know at the jail even asked lisa well, why are you guys all emotional he wasn't even there by the way i know but he goes yeah we don't you don't have the emotional attachment i lost a finger in that process I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, i broke out in her petty blisters and it's, you know we, we went to crap that week because it was just how we did it was very uh stressful but thank god chris was the magnificent man that he is it he couldn't have down gone. to it. He, it was perfect. Couldn't have been more perfect. And it's still ongoing because now we've got more yeah. things that need to be done. And it's just a continuous process of just making this place look like it did, you know, back in the day. So it's and been and after five years, it's probably going to be another five years. <laughs> before. That's, okay. <laughs> That's okay. We have nothing but time. And yeah. yeah. So, so I'm, you know, I know you've been asked this a million times, but I got to know what has been like the craziest thing that's happened to y'all since you've been there. Take it away, Lisa. <laughs> Besides Lisa, so what's many. the craziest thing that's Besides, happened? <laughs> Besides my appearance three years ago. Hmm. Um, scariest thing that has just by hands down where I was looked at her and was like, I'm calling, I'm getting, I'm getting a hotel room tonight was loss of time. Mm -hmm. So you're not really thinking paranormal. This is like interdimensional weirdness where we've got documentation of where we were and what we were doing for these full two minutes. But there was stuff going on in the background that neither one of us. We had two recorders going and they, it was recording stuff that, didn't happen to us and we were but we were sitting right there because you got right there so it's like wait a minute where were we because this the the background noise was it was like police sirens like 10 police cars had pulled up into our going line. into the front of our building and it went on for a full two minutes but you can still hear us sitting right there in the garage talking talking i acknowledge it and we know all the police officers in house bill they're all friends of ours they come visit they love the jail we hear a siren off in the distance and we're like hey there goes saul or there goes yeah. you know whoever he said, hey, somebody yeah and we never it was i mean it was so loud you know it was, it was like they right there and it was on two recorders it wasn't just Oh, maybe it was residual noise on one. It was on two. So I don't know where where we were for those two minutes, but it was that for me was very scary. But um, I had told you of similar experiences that yes, I've had there with loss of time long before we actually experienced that. But 
But until you experience it, that is, yes. well, I mean, bring me back the <laughs> It's the worst. Bring me back the, the growling, you know? Bring me that back the booth, yeah. Was very, Throw me an apparition. Very unsettling. Um, but we've had, we've been growled at, we've heard each other's voices when we're not even near each other. Um, I've shown up in photographs when I wasn't there. I mean, lights turning on that have goodness. never been on, big never dark was. shadows. Um, yeah, there's, there's a, a lot of stuff that goes on there. But for me, the scariest was the time loss. That was, that was beyond paranormal. So because you can't figure it out. You can't blame it on a spirit made that happen or this made that happen or it's like it goes beyond you know, what we're used to investigating. Would you say there's like a doppelganger there if you're hearing I, each other's I voices? I use that term and I think so. I mean, we've done, I do, I do a lot of ITC research and, you know, ghost boxing is kind of my thing. And we have several. I've heard my voice come out of the box. I've heard my son's voice come out of the box when he was there investigating with me. He's like, that's my voice. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, yeah, it is. But they do a lot of that imitation. Uh, had, we had a friend there one weekend, and she said, I was out in the garage yelling at you through the wall to this room next door where Lisa and I stay. It used to be an EMS office, a huge room. And we oh, and it was there, also we had, there were 23 public hangings, mind you. We thought yeah, we were safe. Yeah, yeah. We're safe. <laughs> it, was, it was a couple of years after I'd been there. I thought, well, thank God for this room. It gives me a you know quiet, safe sanctuary to stay in when groups are here for the night because we don't go in and you know hang around you or anything like that. And then I found out that yeah, the gallows once stood there, and there were 23 public hangings, and it's like sweet yeah. but we've had a lot of stuff happen in there too so oh, yeah. it's not like a, a safe zone like we can't keep a clock on the wall and no he's, he's there by herself recently and she's texting me it's 3 15 and the clock fell off the wall and it doesn't work anymore <laughs> well she just kind of <laughs> cast it to the side when i got up there and looked at it the, and hands, are the, the hands are all twisted on it behind the glass i mean it's got a glass dome over I'm like yeah. and I gotta be there again this Friday without you dang it I know, I'm so sorry I am so sorry <laughs> well be all right. <laughs> uh, for a lot of people out there they don't know that Lisa and I used to be on the same team back in Houston and um, we had some fun experiences on some uh, investigations yeah but we did my favorite was the spring house I love that. Invest that was amazing. That was, was that? amazing evidence. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna let let me let you tell the story about about farmer. Oh, you tell it. No, no, you <laughs> tell it. You tell you, you tell it. You uh, videoed the the screen, so you tell the true. story. Um, so we were at this house, and it was for sale, so nobody was living in there. It was vacant, but we were able to have an overnight investigation at a client's house. Um. During the night, Kyle was upstairs in one of the rooms and you see this. And I mean, most people would probably look at it and think, oh, that's just a bug. But mm -hmm. it had a very particular pattern and then it disappeared into the wall. So we were all downstairs and we're watching it on the DVR and I'm recording it with my phone. And as I'm recording it, as we listen back, you hear a voice go, that was me like a female voice whispering because we're like I'm videoing you know the the screen and on my phone you hear it go that was me like she was standing with us watching the screen and she's like oh yeah that was me I mean clear as day it was really really cool that was a cool that was a cool investigation oh, for sure I would love to go back to that house because that was that was Minus that was beyond cool with us yeah let's, let's go back <laughs> Now, there's one story I want to tell because y'all got me good when I was upstairs and, you know, the, the house was vacant. So I'm walking around barefoot because I hate wearing shoes <laughs> and I'm sitting up there and I'm with R my friend Rodney. Mm -hmm. And I told him, man, my feet feel like they're on fire. And then I come downstairs and y'all are like, hey, did anything happen? I'm like, no, nothing really. I said, but my feet felt like they were burning. And every one of y'all was laughing 
Yes. I'm um, like, what the heck is so funny? And they're like, oh, we told him to go up there and tickle your feet. I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, sorry, yep. son of a gun, you. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a really cool house. Nothing evil by any means in that house, but it was a it was a, a cool active night. And it was it was a good time. I think we all had a good time. So. You know, no. I, my uh, <laughs> my digital recorder, I had it in the room where me and Rodney were sleeping. Mm -hmm. And when I went back to listen, it sounded like a woman was having sex on that thing. <laughs> I remember that because we were like, that was you and Mitch. But he was like, no. You don't have to tell him about our SLS character upstairs. Oh, like, boy, I got to hear this one. Well, we got some we got some pervert spirits up in our jail, but you know. <laughs> The old prisoners. The cells upstairs were actually built in 1876, and then they were brought over. 1874. My apologies. And they were erected, and the jail was built around them. So they're like really, really old cells. And uh, we had some repeat offenders over. Uh, light paranormal. It was uh, Roger Johnson and his wife Leslie were upstairs, and she's in the cell. And this SLS stick figure is just doing his business oh no oh, i mean no. and there's no mistaking what's happening i mean i'm like what else can that be i mean it, it was, i'm like i apologize for the perverted spirit we <laughs> have in our jail I really but i think it like but. poked her butt or something that night too they it, they really <laughs> like her for some you know say they really like her but yeah we have some interesting spirits and then that one night that tim uh Tim and Mike were here and yes. in, we, in the sheriff's office, sheriff's office, Sheriff John's waving at us from the chair and then he pans over to the sheriff's bedroom and there's two stick figures having sex in like flipping positions, oh, like no. full tilt. I mean, it's, it's like, I don't it's right watching this, but oh my gosh, that's so, that's so funny. Full tilt Go going ahead, so. Ghost porn. I don't know what's going on. Going on the old <laughs> Now, I I believe Rodney's the one that told me that he was there one time and the the uh, cell doors opened. They like open. That happened. Uh, J P Doyle did a series called Paranormal Isolation, which was just paranormal, <laughs> and uh, he did a show where he was at the jail five days all alone. And and I think it was his fourth or it was like a five part series. I think it was part four. And he's sleeping upstairs, not in the cells, but on a cot in between the men's side, the women's side of cells or the big hallway. And he's got the recorder going and you can see him laying there sleeping and he's dead asleep. And you see this big cell door just swing open right by his head. These and doors are 500 pounds. You can't like, they are Oh, yeah, in his video, he says, like, yeah, these doors must weigh 100 pounds. I'm like, no, they weigh like 400 pounds. But he didn't even realize that happened until he got home and started reviewing all this footage and everything. And he called me and goes, I'm going to send you something you're going to freak. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, send it. I'm like, wow. It, it opens like butter. And it's hard. I mean, for even Deborah and I to push that door open. It does yeah, not. Yeah, it takes a lot. I mean, we actually lube up our doors. And the mechanisms that control these locks are these big mechanisms that swing out that lock all those cells. And if you don't, because of the humidity and the fact that it's not climate controlled up there, so sometimes it's raining on the inside, we do, you know, spray uh, like the equivalent of WD 40, but not, but it keeps all that stuff moving and. But, but yeah, it's still even, even being freed up, ain't nothing just swinging open with a, one hand really even if you're a big guy so it's pretty crazy i mean i have recordings i don't know how many of walking away from the downstairs cells and hear all this banging start as i'm walking away and i'm not hearing it but i know i'm close because i can hear my footsteps and all this crazy banging is going on sometimes for a couple of hours i would leave camera or recorders going back there while i was in there working and finally get around to listening to it and going, oh my God, I hope he's sleeping there that night. Like we did that night and we heard the chair being drugged from one side of the jail uh, to the side and it stopped and then it drugged back. And you could tell because it was 
from the where the recorder was sitting, you could hear that chair being further away and then being drugged back. And then it starts raining and it's midnight. And she looks at me and she's like, we got to go close those windows. I'm like, girl, I don't think so. You're going to close those windows. <laughs> I'm not going back in there. <laughs> I'm like, yes, you are. <laughs> I did, but still, it was yeah. very unsettling. <laughs> like, just... Oh my gosh. <laughs> so um, we've got people on here that are watching from Ireland, from Australia. Wow. Um, somebody, hey, somebody just said Ohio. <laughs> Hey, my family. Oh, no. <laughs> anyway, um, somebody asked what jail we were talking about. We're talking about the old Lavaca jail in Howitzville, Texas. Haunted Old uh, Jail. Yeah. Uh, hadn't it been on Ghost Adventures and a few other no. Old shows? No. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> no. No, but Zach is welcome to book a night and come stay. Book a night, Zach. To. <laughs> we're not into doing the production stuff really i mean i'm just uh not after the last experience it was that bad it was that bad I mean, if there was a great show that had great people that actually investigated we would welcome them with open arms and give them the vip treatment but I'm just not seeing it right now with and there are tons of new shows cropping up and i'm starting to enjoy more the uh, reenactment tell my stories kind of things and uh <laughs> investigators well i'll tell you what you need to get the guys from ghost hunters over there those guys well, are awesome <laughs> they are awesome i <laughs> wish they'd come see us it'd be great well i'll, there were I'll one talk of the few to shows them i actually really really liked back in the day and felt like they really approached things scientifically tried to debunk things legit yeah. exactly. have you have you watched the show this season and all the news yes i have i've seen a few episodes of man I would love to see them take that that photon camera in there and see what they capture. And that'd be awesome. Yeah. Man, that would, that's lost after their equipment. Up, Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll talk to them. I can't guarantee nothing because I know they, you know, they got to go through the network oh, and all that stuff. But oh, yeah, I know that would be an awesome place for them to go. Yes, it would. So, how, how big is it? Big is it? We've lost a lot of square footage recently. Yeah. Um, it's not a super large place. Uh, that's the reason they closed it down and built a new county jail. I think maximum capacity was allegedly like 17 prisoners. Oftentimes they had a lot more, but uh, it has downstairs cells, it has upstairs cells, it has a sheriff's office. Uh, what used to be a visitation room when I got there it was actually the original front parlor and uh, the chapel room. room. It was a lot of different things. Yeah, it was a lot of things. We found a lot of interesting things in the ceilings up there when we tore out the drop ceilings and yeah, we did. <laughs> Bible oh. pages and uh, yeah, lots of hidden things in that old jail. We found old tear gas, uh, grenade bombs, and you know, <laughs> when uh, when Michelle and I went on our honeymoon, we went to the Ohio State Reformatory, and oh, no. uh, oh, I'd love to go there. And I think that was the one we went to that um, the there was a bottom part that flooded, and somebody was stuck down there and, and drowned. Um, but y'all said y'all had some flooding at y'all's place too, right? Yeah, yeah twice it was flooded with eight feet of water. No one died, but. Uh, I mean, a lot of people oh. in town died. Their whole family swept away during that flood. It's pretty catastrophic. So it's uh, been amazing that that building is so structurally sound that we are able to restore it, and it didn't lose you know any major parts of foundation because of the flooding or anything like that. And so, how it's built itself in general. I mean, even if you if you come to the jail. I mean, you could literally make like a whole weekend of it because the whole town is so historic and it has so much history and so many beautiful back roads and these little hidden cemeteries and chapels. And it's just, it's a very haunted and very historic. Magnificent town. courthouse on the square. It's got the old timey town square. Uh, every year for Christmas, there are like 300,000 lights on this thing. I mean, it's just breathtaking. I've never seen anything quite like it. We generally don't book the jail. The, uh, 
the Saturday night after Thanksgiving is the lighting of the courthouse and a parade and everybody wants to park at the jail and hang out. And so we usually block it off on our calendar because our, if you come there to investigate, you're going to be really upset that there's all this activity going on. But it's a fun time for us. And we yeah. have fun decorating the jail up. And I like those little towns. Just something about oh, them. Oh, so cool. It's an old German Czech community, Catholic community. So, yeah, they're wild about me, at least. They're, but, yeah, they're uh, okay. <laughs> I heard y'all do seances over there. <laughs> I don't know what Lisa does. I just they don't know, they don't know if we're mother or daughter or lesbian lovers. I swear to God, we get the strangest looks. <laughs> well, that's because you're crazy. Yeah. And... <laughs> Walks around the town square in the middle of the night in pajamas and monster house shoes. And look, yeah. it's all about being comfortable, okay? Right, right. So, <laughs> in and around there, where's like the best place to go investigate that's kind of not so famous? In Houseville, I think uh, we're pretty much, uh, yeah. I mean, the other locations that are close to us is the now defunct Yoakum Hospital. Um, yeah. Yorktown is 45 minutes away, La Bahia, a little over an hour, uh, Goliad, uh, San Antonio. Um, I can't think of anything else, can you? Yorktown was pretty fun. Lisa and, and I and, and the rest of the gang got to go to spend the night. And man, that was a, that was a wild time, wasn't it? Yeah, ask her about her last wild time there. Uh, a week ago? I'm sense? never going back again. So I, uh, I think they lost Lisa. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm forbidden to go there again, and that's fine by me because uh, I've never felt such evil and terror, and I fled the building, and I've never done that before. So it was, okay. it actually wasn't a very good experience, and I was very sad that Deborah wasn't there with me because it was one of those, I need my money. Um, <laughs> I'm glad I was not there with you. It, no, it, what, was, it was very scary. What very freaked scary. me out was every time we walked by that one spot where they had the dummy in the- Oh, in that, that hallway. <laughs> oh my God. Every time it got me. Yeah, and I know, know it's there. there. <laughs> <laughs> we in one of our showers we have a thing hanging. It's like the wearing the screen mask. Screen mask. Yeah, <laughs> big draped figure hanging in a shower because Lisa. And even though I know it's there, every time I walk around the corner and see that, it's just like oh god. It'll startle me every now and then too. So <laughs> <laughs> that picture that we got a uh, uh, looked like children and a nurse down the hallway. Yeah. That yeah, I got that freaky. photo, at, and that was at like eight o'clock in the morning. I mean, that was just me walking through, and I remember walking out of the very back room down the long hallway to the right, and hearing footsteps and shuffling of clothes, and <laughs> took the photo and didn't even look at it. I mean, stupid me, I should have looked at it because I mean, it could have been like, oh my god, you guys get in here, grab a recorder or something. But that was. That was pretty amazing. That place I've doesn't. This photo that's pretty cool. Yeah. Well, you know, and I'm I'm not going to swear that it's paranormal, but it's a weird coincidence. But there was that picture that all the guys took together, mm -hmm. and you remember we had brand spanking new shirts. Yeah. And in one spot on my, on my shirt, it was white. Like it looked almost like a hand was reaching out. I'll have to show you that picture. If yes. I, if I can yeah. find it, but. Right after that, I kept having stomach pains. And I mean, it was so severe that I ended up going to three different doctors. They did test after test after test, could not figure out what was wrong. And all they were doing was giving me pain pills all the time. And that would only work for so long. But um, Rodney, I don't know what it is about that guy, but I went to talk, talk to him about it. And he, he said something to me and the pain just went away. Never came back. Huh. Bring so, Rodney to the jail, will you? Right. <laughs> we well, you Rodney. Rodney helped hang our fan with Rip Crew. <laughs> yeah, Rodney's actually been to the jail. 
couple yeah. times. Oh yeah, he he is the jack of all trades when it comes to fixing <laughs> stuff. But you know, he's he's also our our demonologist, I guess you'd say. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and, I don't know. Um, we had a, a medium tell us that uh, there was a a child in a wheelchair that had attached to me, and that's what was, was causing the pain. And if I go talk to Rodney, uh, that it was going to go away, and it did. Yeah. Well, I, I remember, remember you were reading a book in the nursery and getting a lot of like K two hits when you were reading the book in the nursery. I do remember that. Yes. Well, you remember there was that rocking chair and I took the K2 meter and I set it on top of there. And mind you, there's no electricity in this place. No, not, not, not. Oh, I know. There still isn't. And no. we were in that room and I, I said, you know, if you want to come play on this uh, rocking horse, you're more than welcome. Mm-hmm. And right after I said that, that thing pegged out. And then yeah. there was those freaking dolls. You'd ask a question. <laughs> We'd walk by this it thing. Was I don't, it was like it was so funny. <laughs> we we had walked by that place. I don't know how many times during the night, and then and when everybody decided to go to bed, Michelle's like, "Hey, I'm not done yet. You want to go back?" And I'm like, mm-hmm. "Sure." And we go to that room, and then we started asking questions, and it's freaking dolls, and they're mm-hmm. identical, and they started talking, and you know, it was like "Mama" and "Night yep. Night" and "I love you" and all this stuff. <laughs> Yeah, I and, they were talk- <laughs> and one of the guys even took the thing apart to find out if it was maybe a motion sensor or something like that. Could not get that thing to go off unless we asked a question. Yeah, we're like sticking a flashlight to its head. Like, well, maybe it's just like <laughs> eyes or motion sensored or something. We're like, I mean, trying to debunk it. But yeah, that was weird. That was some weird stuff going on that night. Oh, man, we could tell some tales, huh? Yes, we go. Oh, can we ever? <laughs> we'll stick to the clean ones. <laughs> Barbecue right. night at the gym house. <laughs> I got some more shirts to burn. <laughs> if you also remember, I got that scratch on my head. Couldn't figure out where the hell it came from. I do remember that too. That was a crazy night. And so, <laughs> did, have you had anything like that happen at the old Lavaca jail where somebody's gotten scratched or hurt or anything like that? This past Thursday, actually. No kidding. Yeah, there was Thursday a, night, wasn't it? it was yeah, Ross Morris and uh, yeah, he's uh, the guy that's doing our haunted house for us this year. Rogers, always, the owner of the jail, has always wanted us to do a haunted house for Halloween, and, and it's just it's really expensive. You gotta have, you know you gotta have stuff. But anyway, a good friend of ours, Robbie Flores from San Antonio, comes and investigates there a lot. That's his thing. So. He's volunteering to do a haunted house for us this year. And it's going to be crazy. Oh, my. I mean, like off the chain crazy. He built us an electric chair already. And uh, I mean, just <laughs> some of the props and things. It, this is one sick man, I'm going to tell you. <laughs> but he's going to be there for a week putting it all together. And we'll probably do a Friday, Saturday night. Uh open to the public haunted house, hopefully, <laughs> if the COVID <laughs> doesn't come back again. again. <laughs> so are y'all just going to do it for a couple of days, or are you going to have it like we're, No, we're just going to do it for two nights, Friday and Saturday night. Okay, what what night is Halloween? Saturday. It's a Saturday, Saturday. so we're going to do Friday and Saturday, and have a drive through trick-or-treat for the kids, whether they want to go in the haunted house or not, you know. We did that last year, I think, and maybe the year before. Ghost hunt again this year, too. Yeah, always- I, might, I might have to make my way up there for at least Friday night. I, w- I would do Saturday, but I'm officiating a wedding that day. So, oh. <laughs> how cool. <laughs> We've had some weddings I, and you know, like to, say, I need to have your vow renewal. And we have somebody else we can call, Lisa. Because I had my vow renewal at the jail, it was so much fun. Wore a little sheriff shirt and a belt, some boots, and Chris had the little prisoner costume on. It was awesome. Wow, if it y'all was, did, it was cute. If y'all have another wedding there and they're looking for an officiant, you know how to get a hold of Wait, them. Wait, man, that'd be great. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so, what what do you, y'all have planned uh, for the place coming up? Sweating. <laughs> sweating. Sweating. <laughs> a, lot, a lot of sweating. 
Well, now that we've got all the building torn apart, we uh, <laughs> all the front part torn off, we still have to resurface all that. I mean, we pulled stuff out. There's shit that has to be, has to be removed. We have to resurface, restucco, repaint, rebuild window frames, replace screens. We're left with a huge patio out front now where the uh, building used to be that we tore down. So all of that will have to be resurfaced. We're usually a little slow as far as guests go during the summer because it is so hot. And so we, are booked this we are booked this weekend though, and next weekend. We're booked through June and some in July and booking in August. We're, after that, we're full up already, I think, for weekend stuff. But we are available seven days a week for filming, for overnights. It doesn't come up on our schedule. If you try to book online, just call one of us. We'll make it happen. Right. So you want to tell everybody how they can get a hold of y'all? They can uh, get a hold of us on Facebook at the Hunter Old Lubaka County Jail. Lisa's got everything else, all the Twitter and <laughs> Instagram and Grandma's yeah. old and <laughs> The stuff that's not Facebook appropriate, I put on Instagram. So go follow that page. It's awesome. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, there are certain things the best you put on our page. On that page. It is like, yeah. Um, but no, Haunted Old Lavaca County Jail on both our Facebook page and our Instagram page, there is um, a link in the bio. Just hit that and it'll take you to um, whether you want to book for a weekend, if you're booking. Um, Filming, or if you're booking, please a warm come movie. shoot an old western film, music, uh, something like that that takes like two weeks because I'm on social security, you get money. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, I'll ask around. Maybe we can get somebody to come out there and do some filming. We're on the uh, Austin Film Commission, San Antonio, the Texas Film Commission, all those sites, uh, and we have done a number of films there. We've done music videos, heavy metal music video. I was Ooh. in a music video. I got to beat up this guy. It was so much fun. <laughs> oh my God, that was so much fun. Oh my God. Okay, it you was. gotta tell me who who are the artists that were there. Oh, we okay. can't mention them though. Well, I can't well, that one that you're talking about. They had some issues within their band and the film was kind of suspended. So yeah, we won't mention them, but they're great and we love them. Uh, a group called Masked. M-A-S-Q-U-E-D. Um, you can look at their video on YouTube. And I'm trying to think of the name of it. Uh, it'll come to me in a second. Anyway, look up Mask and you'll see a video shot in the jail upstairs. Really cool. If you like heavy metal, and it's a good band. Yeah, they are good. Yes. Heavy metal. If I had my phone on, I would look it up real quick, but. <laughs> and y'all have a YouTube as well, right? Uh, not really. No. Uh, if you just type of... "Haunted Old Lavaca County Jail," there are a bunch of videos. Yeah, sure. if you type in anything "Old Lavaca County Jail," "Haunted Old Lavaca County Jail," you get thousands and thousands of videos. That are just, I mean, amazing evidence people have gotten there. You know, when I first started going there, and it's like, yeah, people get their hair pulled. Or you get touched. It's like, man, this place is great. And went downhill from there. Uh, I remember um, before it was open to the public and I'm just up there working by myself and invited a few friends over just to hang out for an evening. Wanted to have somebody else have experiences besides me. And for, you know, it was like four people and out of the four, three people had touching experiences and Big shout out to my friend Chris Cheatham. He was there. Uh, he was just uh, released from prison. He's anxious to come and see how the jail has changed since uh, he went away I know. a few years ago. So I'm fixing to wrap him up and take him up there. And that's going to be his only contact with jail from here on out. Him and his girl Trisha, we're going to go. But I mean, to go from those little experiences like that that people had to some of the like earth shattering mind-blowing i don't even know how to describe it stuff i mean we've had so many things happen we don't even talk about because nobody would believe that crap you know <laughs> what were you on when that happened i mean 
truly there are things that hearing your voice on tape say things you never said and lapses of time and we don't really discuss that with people but it's always a, a big relief when somebody else says man you won't believe what happened to me here i had this happen i like, thank god it's not just me well, but yeah it goes beyond the, the the boo if you want a great experience it's a good place to come well everybody that's watching or listening um, be sure to check out the haunted old Lavaca jail. If you can get there, get there. That, get that's there. our plan that we've been saying that for a long time. It's time to go ahead and do it. Well, the invite is open. Y'all just let me know when y'all can make it. Definitely yeah. will. Lisa bakes cookies. Just saying. I know. <laughs> I'm going to make, I'm gonna make diet cookies then or something. I don't know. <laughs> sugar free, sugar free. Sugar free the almondettes that you, that you get at uh, Walmart are pretty good. So. <laughs> we'll take that. I'll, I'll, I'll the recipe so <laughs> well ladies thank you so much for being on the show I, oh I really thank you for having it. us you gotta come see us now we're like you know you gotta you gotta come yeah y'all do for sure <laughs> and i'd like to thank everybody that's joined us and uh, come back and check us out again next tuesday that'd be eight eastern seven central right here on paranormal warehouse i'm coyote night and this is Transcendental Night Offerings. Thank you so much. Thank Thanks you. All. Paul Boy. TKO would like to thank you for your support of this show and the network. Tune in next week for another informative episode.